Oh hey, welcome back. I'm just taking some time and coloring in my coloring book. Creativity takes courage. That's a pretty good message, I think. I mean, there's something about art that really captivates us and gets us really interested. Art is an important part of our culture. We learn from it, it allows us to express ourselves, it even comforts us. We're going to be starting a novel this week called The Watsons Go to Birmingham. At the beginning of the year I talked about how writing a novel or writing a story is kind of like handcrafting something. And I compared it to the wooden stool I made in high school to a manufactured stool you might find in a store. When people write stories, you want it to be handcrafted. You want it to be unique. You want it to be special. Art's kind of like that. I mean, you can buy things where art is sort of manufactured, like a coloring book, or you can open an entire world and create and design something completely from your imagination. My cousin, Lauren, is an artist. She loves art, she creates it, she's imaginative, but she also loves teaching other people about art. So she's going to talk a little bit about her passion and her business, so take a look. Well, hello there. I'm Lauren Runyon. I am Mr. Boone's cousin. Older cousin. Yeah, I could tell you some stories, but I'll try to be nice today. I am an art teacher, and I have been an art teacher for over 20 years. I've taught in all kinds of settings, in private schools and public schools, and now I own my own art studio, and I get to teach kids. Mr. Boone wanted me to share some things that I love. And when I was a kid, all I wanted was some glue and tape, a little bit of paint, anything I could find to make with. My whole life revolved around creating and making art. And that has grown into my lifelong passion and my goal for everyone is to teach kiddos how to be creative. So come on, I'll show you some of what I do. process art, the kind of art where kids get the chance to mess up and try new things to explore. We're about learning and making mistakes and moving on through it and making messes somewhere that's not your house. When your kid comes and creates here, it is so different from a standard classroom because in a standard classroom there is a right answer and there is a wrong answer and it's safer here in a sense than a regular classroom because their performance is not based on a grade, and they feel more free to take risks. Taking risks is a huge part of being a human being, and that's how we try new things out, is to take a risk. And Yellow Bobby Pins offers a kid a safe place to do that. I love children's literature, I love children's illustrations, and it's so important to introduce young kids to the story. So we start with a story, and then as the kids rotate through the room, they explore different materials and they try textures. Themes around the room are built on the story, so it changes from week to week. There's new things happening, and I offer support and guidance along the way, but I also give them the freedom to pick and choose their path as they go. So if they come up with another solution other than the one that I demonstrated, that is celebrated. So I'm a business owner. I own a small business and I teach art to kids. Well, during this whole season with coronavirus, I can't teach kids. So I've had to learn how to totally reinvent myself and I'm learning online classes and online teaching and I'm learning new projects to develop to connect with my community and my kids and uh, it's just been a wild adventure like I'm sure you're on but I can't quit because my drive and my passion is being creative and connecting with the next generation and sharing creativity with them I know you're in the middle of something really hard right now and doing classes at home and doing school without your friends and I don't even know what else is going on in your day-to-day -day life but you can't quit 
because there's something inside of you that the next generation needs. What you grow up and create and become is something the world will never have if you don't do it. Keep going, keep striving, keep pushing forward, keep becoming a better version of you. I'm really proud of the students that I've interacted with over this time and the joy and the excitement that they face each day with. I'm cheering you on. You've got this. Thanks, Lauren. Definitely good messages in your video. Hopefully we'll take it to heart. You keep doing what you're doing. Follow your passion. As for us, it's time to talk about our novel, The Watts to Go to Birmingham. A big theme about this story is all about family. So if I were to pick another page to color, I think this one might just do the work. Let's continue talking about how writing as art, because the novel that we're going to read over the next several weeks is definitely handcrafted. The author has taken time to create unique and interesting characters that basically go on a journey. So on day 21, our learning target is, I will be able to think about the setting of the novel by answering five questions. I'm going to walk you through the five questions because each of them go along with a photo, and your job is just simply to kind of talk about what the question is asking you to do. The novel is called The Watsons Go to Birmingham, 1963. There's a reason why the date is in the title, because this is historical fiction. So in order to adequately prepare for the story, we should probably talk about 1963, because what happens in the story is unique to its historical time period. And as you probably can guess, life in 1963 was quite different. So let's read what's in the yellow box. Historical context gives us background information that will help us understand the story better. In order to really appreciate this story, we need to understand the historical context, the background information, what life was like, just to kind of give us some perspective. So in question one that you're going to answer today, I want you to take a look at this photo. This is an interesting picture. I want you to compare and contrast this photo to what you might see today. This is a family in the living room, and they are all enjoying what appears to be a television show. So describe what you see in the picture. What do you think is interesting? But then at the same time, I want you to compare how your living room might look with your family today. I imagine that maybe the way you're dressed, what you're doing, how you're doing it may look quite different. Things costed a lot different in 1963 as well. In fact, if you wanted to buy a loaf of bread, it cost you just 22 cents. A gallon of gas, 30 cents. Gasoline has been a lot cheaper lately because of the coronavirus and not as many people driving, but none of us has seen 30 cent gas. Living wages, how much you were paid in 1963 was quite a bit different from today. I know none of you have a job, but if you did in 1963, you would have earned about $4,400 a year. That comes out to about $84 a week. There's no way that you could live on that wage today. So this is just kind of shows you how much life has changed and how much difference there is between what we buy and what we actually even do. Take a look at this picture. I think this is fascinating. Let me read you the caption in the yellow box. Riders read their morning newspapers on New York subway en route to work on April 1st, 1963, after the end of the city's 114-day newspaper strike. Here's what I want you to think about with this picture. I want you to compare this picture to what it might look like today. So look and see what these men are doing and what's going on in the picture. And then today, if you were to be, let's say, on a bus or even on a subway train, what might it look like if you were to retake it? How different would things be? Here's a famous couple. President John F. Kennedy and First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy ride in a parade in Washington, D.C. on March 27, 1963. If you know anything about history, then you might be able to know the answer to this question, but I want you all to take a, a guess, even if you're not sure. What famous event happens to this president in 1963? 
This also paints what life is like, and so knowing what happened to them can be kind of helpful. All of you should know who this person is. Civil rights leader Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. waves to supporters on the mall in Washington, D.C. during the March on Washington on August 28, 1963. King said the march was, quote, the greatest demonstration of freedom in the history of the United States. Here's what I want you to think about with this picture. There's a reason why 1963 appears in the title of our book. I think 1963 is an important year, not just for our fictional characters, but for America at large. So here's the question. How do we know that there could be a connection between the novel and civil rights? Use the book cover and title to help you out. Today, we're really just focusing on the setting of our story. So let's read the yellow caption. The setting of the story, 1963 in Birmingham, will be very important to understanding author's purpose. If you know history, then you know something important will happen. For those of you who know history, you know that there's some important things that happened in 1963. That's going to play a big part in our story. But don't forget that quarter four is all about literary analysis. Understanding author's purpose, why did he write the story, what is he saying through the characters, why is the setting important, all of those things are going to be helpful in making you better readers. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the central theme of the novel and ask you one more question to think about. The theme is, there's a strength in all of us that gives us the courage to deal with our problems. When it comes to the elements of fiction, theme is probably one of the hardest things to figure out. So why not give it to you up front and then look for the evidence as to how we know that that's the theme. So the question for you to think about is, what does this even mean? I want you to think about that statement and come up with some ideas as to what this might mean. Once you've done that, you're all ready to go. And tomorrow, we'll start with chapter one. See you then.